How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Grip Mike here. Today I've got Ricardo here. Uh, he's standing right next to his plane. And since a lot of you have been asking about maintenance uh, for airplanes, I thought this is a perfect opportunity to get an inside look of an a uh, actual airplane that's going through maintenance. So Ricardo, please give us a tour of this bird. What do you got going? Absolutely, my name is Ricardo Foster. I'm here in Tampa Bay. Um, it's not sunny right now, but it was earlier. So essentially that's what happens here. We get a lot of rain showers and then it's sunny out. Um, today we're gonna talk about my Cessna 172. It's a 57 year old airplane. And um, we're just in the process of overhauling the airplane. Now what we're gonna do is a, a rundown and walk around to kind of talk about um, all the aspects of kind of maintaining this awesome aging aircraft that basically flies true. Um, it seems like it just came from the factory yesterday. So um, it's a 1961 Cessna 172 Bravo uh, with a 0300 Continental engine. Uh, the engine currently is in the shop for the last um, 45 days and it should be ready here in the next um, 30 days or less. So in the next month we'll have the engine on and we'll be able to assemble it and put it back on, do a run-up test and kind of get this aircraft flying. Um, I'm going to walk around the right hand side, kind of point out some things for you. Um, as, as you know, this is an airplane, we have a wing and structurally it's sound and we can come around. Here's a strut we're passing on. Then the first thing we're going to encounter is the door, the left door, and this is the pilot seat, of course. And um, um, you have the panel. Um, what's going to be happening with this panel is we're going to do some upgrades. We're going to do, um, we're not going to go glass. We're going to do a Garmin something or autopilot um, Garmin navigational IFR equipped uh, panel here. This is an old and very dated. Um, panel so we're gonna get a nav navigation and communication device and um, possibly autopilot okay so talk to me right now like how do you currently fly so this is just a VFR platform and I see like a GPS device how do you currently fly this uh, like with what missions do you do you fly it on it, before you upgrade it yeah, it's certified IFR and um, VFI and IFR and so we can do IFR in this. Um, it's, it was certified, but it's out of certification right now. Okay. Um, so that's the mission. Uh, we train with it. We fly local flights up to 430, 40 miles and um, have fun with it. Um, we do go local hops, St. Petersburg, Clearwater Beach, um, Zafra Hills, just locally, um, nothing crazy. Uh, okay. but and have you had to do anything on the interior since you bought it or like what, what, what I want to get a good picture of some of the money you spent just owning just to be able to keep it flying? Yeah, um, on average, we do a yearly annual and we sink about two to three thousand dollars in a year for annual. That's um, not bad. It, it is an old bird. And and. Mind you, it's about a grand to fifteen hundred, and I typically try to put in a little bit of thousand or, or extra monies into for upkeep. What we're going to do here with the carpet, we're going to change out the carpet and um, clean up the the upholstery, um, which is good. We're just going to clean it up and get it uh, into a nicer condition. We're going to replace some of the handles um, because we're going to use this as a training platform and um, go from there. Okay. Yeah. So. Tell us about this exterior. Is this the original paint, or did you did you have to repaint at any point? This is the original paint. Um, what I've been told is that this airplane has been hangered for the last 25 years. Um, so oh, wow. it's always been hangered. I had it for about six months that it wasn't hangered. But this airplane, uh, I believe this is the original paint uh, for a 57-year-old airplane. And how long have you had it? I've had it for three years now. Wow. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And you should know, like, we're, we're sitting in his hangar, and this hangar is attached to his home here. So Ricardo lives at an air park. Uh, we, may, we may do another video about that because he's living the dream right now. If you look outside, that's the runway right there. You know, he just pulls out the, the airplane, and he's ready to go. Uh, and that's, that's, to me, that's every pilot's dream. Um, and are you able to talk to us a little bit also about that? Because earlier you were mentioning 
how being a poly community, it's made it somewhat easier to to own an airplane because you get you know help in hand with. So can you discuss some of that? What that experience has been like? Absolutely. Just like um, getting the airplane engine off, I had no clue whatsoever. I even went on YouTube and it was like dark on YouTube. So guess what? I reached out to a couple of, of friends and they came out and helped me take off the engine. The engine um, uh, lift was a fellow neighbor down the road. Um, the engine box got donated. That's the and, lift, um, by the way. <laughs> I mean, everything you need here on the air park, someone knows about it and you can ask a question. Um, I ran out of oil a couple of months, uh, a year back, and I went over and visited my friend and he had the oil, he had hydraulic fluid, and he had washers to, and um, little filters for the, um, the gas leak that I had here. And so that's the type of uh, environment I live in where uh, my neighbors are aviators and they're friends and, and they're always willing to help. Also, let me point out that this aircraft, the mission will be to be utilizing a, a, a flying club. And so I recently started a flying club about two and a half months ago, and um, it's my hope and dream to lower the cost of flight training for everyone. Um, my goal is also to serve and to kind of share aviation with young kids as well as old. So that's one of the missions here. Okay, awesome. Now take us more around the the plane here. We're at the tail end. Have you had to... What, what sort of maintenance goes into any parts here? Do, have you had to switch out antennas or, or anything? Because I, I, I don't have much hours in, in Cessnas, so talk to us about what any cost back here. Right, the panel is opened up to look at the, 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 the wires here. Um, and essentially all of this part in electrical wiring is original. Uh, 57 years old, oh, so um, we have hadn't had much to do with it. We're just inspecting to make sure that the, the 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 lines are good to go. They're not torn or bent, and we have to oil them and put the panel back on, and we're good to go. Okay. Uh, speaking of, since this is a much older plane, I know with the Piper Cherokees, for example, they've had some ADs on them with the wings. Have you dealt any, you know, with anything with that with the Cessna or you've been green all the way? No, it's been good all the way. All the ADs have been uh, taken care of. Cessnas are uh, by far one of the best aircraft, if not the best aircraft on the market um, for um, beginners and older advanced uh, pilots as well. It's a very capable platform. It's safe. It's, um, it's easy for beginners and um, advanced personal pilots, uh, as I mentioned. So um, we haven't had any problems with the wing structurally at all. Okay, awesome. All right, let's, let's see what else is back here. Now, you did mention that since you've owned the plane, you've pretty much hangered it. And also, you, the plane, it's, before you owned it, it's been hangered. Do you think that's played into, or would you, can you say if that's played into the maintenance costs or ownership costs? Because I understand, you know, parking outside versus inside, obviously you may have to deal with liabilities there. Absolutely, you're, you're quite right. Parking you know, outside environmentally is going to be worse off for the airplane. You have the sun, you have the weather. And so keeping it hangered will preserve the life of the airplane. That's why it looks so good. And I believe it contributes to um, the performance that it, it flies well because it doesn't have any mechanic hiccups. It doesn't have any leakages into the fuel tanks or, or into the fuselage at all. So that's a good thing. Okay, awesome. Can you tell us like how long, because every engine has their sort of overhaul time. So how many hours did you have before? Did, okay, I guess the way I'm trying to phrase the question is, did, did something specific happen for you to say, okay, I'm gonna overhaul this engine? Or did, did you just get to the point of overhaul or a certain hour and you're like, okay, it's time to overhaul? I'm happy you, you, you asked me that question. Something did happen to the engine. That's why we are in this overhaul phase. What happened to the... is um, uh, over the years, if you don't run the engine, the engine is gonna freeze up or something is gonna happen because the engine likes to run. And subsequently I deployed and it started having stuck valve with the engine. And then uh, last year we had an annual and the compressions were low 
what that means in the FAA is that we couldn't fly it unless that was fixed. And so what we're gonna do is a top overhaul, which um, encompasses that we remove all the cylinders that are bad and put in new cylinders, which would have cost us about half as much as we would invest if we did the, the whole overall process. So about $10,000 to do a top overhaul is what they call, call it. But in a couple of hundred hours, we could have um, hit another um, repair cost or um, another issue could have pro uh, raised, raised its head. So what we did was we, we came up with a plan that we would do a total teardown and take disassemble the, the engine and bring it back up to 100% um, uh, standards and which will give us another 1,800 um, manufactured TBO is what they called it, 1,800 hours, which it could last us another 20 years by a top overhaul, which could last um, one year to five years, depending on um, how the engine runs. Wow. Okay. So let's, Vioma, let's move back up here because so, cause I want you to talk about the cost more a little bit. So right now you've decided that you're going to do a real overhaul. You're not just doing a top overhaul. Now I've heard different uh, opinions about hours for overhaul. You can always go past them or you can, you can, you know, stick with. So what's your take on that? And then I want you to sort of end with the actual cost. If you don't mind sharing it, if you're not comfortable sharing, that's fine. Uh, or you could say what the general cost is for somebody who's looking to fly one of these and how much they should be looking to spend for an overhaul of the engine. Right, uh, typical cost, um, I called around maybe five to 10 um, aircraft overhaul companies. That specifically, that's what they do. And their costs were from 20,000 all the way up to $35,000. The sweet spot is twenty-five, dollars $26,000 to get a, uh, re, uh, an engine as old as mine to be um, overhauled. This is, that's disassembled, completely put in all new cylinders, um, inspect the crankshaft, make sure everything is running fine, and that should come out to be about twenty six, twenty seven thousand dollars $27,000. And that's what the quote I went with, and um, I was happy with the people that um, provided me that, that quote. Uh, some were a little high, some were a little low, but it depends on your comfort level of who you want to go with. Um, subsequently, this overhaul engine will um, cost me around that range, and then um, it'll be ready to fly. So there you have it, guys. If you are looking to get into airplane ownership, uh, this is a, a very unique airplane, the Cessna 172, in terms, this is the most common uh, plane that people own as pilots. And so I just wanted to give you an idea of the big cost because this is the biggest cost you will go through if you are uh, flying your own airplane, the overhaul. And as you've heard from Ricardo, uh, this overhaul is going to cost him about twenty-three grand. Um, so that's something you save up for, obviously, if you are, you know, flying. Uh, try to save up for that over time. Except maybe you're flying something brand new. But if you're flying uh, a conventional plane, I believe the engine here is also a Continental. Uh, what's the what's the O three hundred? So it's a Continental O three hundred uh, needs overhaul. And honestly, uh, comparable engines, even if it's a Lycoming probably the same class you, you you're looking about the same cost but there you have it uh, this is one of your big maintenance costs uh, for your airplane and I hope you guys enjoy this one and I hope you got something from it if you did be sure to give a thumbs up and also the sponsor for this video is Cold Flight uh, you guys know I work with Cold Flight it's a great great platform to actually keep updated with your maintenance so that way you're not missing anything um, when your annual is coming up, if you have anything that goes wrong with the airplane during the year, you can always keep good record of it. So make sure you check out coflight.com. And if you use the promo code Mojo Grip or use the link exactly in the description below, you get 30 days absolutely free. So check it out, coflight.com forward slash Mojo Grip. And I will see you all on the other side. Peace.